Hello, and welcome to Agros of Physics. Today is day 75, and what we're going to look at today is conservation of energy mathematically. What I'd like to do is solve a couple of problems where we can determine the potential energy or the kinetic energy in an object at different paths in the flight, and there's no friction involved. So we're going to do a straight up peaky peaky problem or two and solve for certain variables. So today is strictly a practice problem day. It's a work day. So let's get out the whiteboard and get to work. This next problem involves a skier moving down a ski jump. And the ski jump itself is 112 feet high and the launch area is 20 feet off the ground. So when we're doing an energy problem, we need to define what the zero point is. Now I could use the, the final ground as the zero point, but since we're concerned about the person leaving the launch place, what we're going to do is call this zero. So the difference in height is actually going to be 112 minus 20 feet, which is 92 feet. So the difference between here and where they start is 92 feet. Now that being said, what we need to then do is convert that 92 into meters. So 92 feet, we have to remember that one meter is 3.28 feet. The feet will disappear and 92 divided by 3.28 gets me 28.05 meters. And that's going to be the top part of the problem. Now, not the top part of the launch because we still don't land on the ground. Another problem may ask us to find what happens after the person leaves the ski jump. But for now, we're just finding how fast you're leaving the jump. Now, what type of energy do we have at the top? Our equation is peaky equals peaky. This is the initial side, and this is the final side, so we can use primes. Now, potential energy at the top, mgh plus the kinetic energy if they're standing still is zero equals potential energy at the bottom if that's my zero point is zero plus one half mv squared now since we didn't know the mass of the skier it's okay because every term we're left with has an m in it g is 9.8 meters per second squared the height is 28.05 meters because all we're concerned about is the change in height equals one-half V squared. So all we have to do is put 9.8 times 28.05 and set that equal, divide it by 0.5, and then take the square root. And our speed leaving the launch is 23.45 meters per second. We don't have to worry about the fact that this is curved at all. We don't have to worry about the fact that we don't land on the ground. If we landed on the ground, we can look at a different problem, and we would use 112 as the starting point, and we could say the ground is zero. But for this problem, we're looking at how fast they leave the ski jump itself. 23.45 meters per second. Now here's a standard problem where we have an object traveling at 25 meters per second initially and it's going to go up a hill and we want to figure out how fast the vehicle is traveling at the top of the hill. Now we have to decide with our peaky peaky equation and remember left side is initial right side is final what terms we have and what terms cancel out. Now what I'm going to do is define the bottom of the hill as my zero and I'm going to call the top of the hill 15. So at the bottom of the hill, in my initial condition, I'm at the ground, so I don't have any potential. Now at the top of the hill, I have potential, and I'm probably going to have kinetic, so we'll leave those two terms. Now the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared equals mgh for potential energy plus 1 half mv squared for the kinetic energy. I don't know the mass of the object, that's why it's not in the box there. So the masses cancel out though, so we're safe. So 1 half 25 meters per second 
the whole quantity squared, equals, and this is the final conditions now, 9.8 times the height, which is 15 meters, plus 1 half V squared. So I'm going to do 0.5 times 25 squared. I'm going to subtract from that, parentheses 9.8 times 15, close parentheses. I get 165.5. I'm going to divide by a half, 331, and then I'm going to take the square root. And my speed at the top is 18.2 meters per second. Now that makes sense because we started at 25, we went uphill, we lost some kinetic energy, gained potential, and it goes slower at the top. Now if this continues along, and we get to the bottom of the hill, how fast will it move at the bottom of the hill? Well, all the potential energy it gained will be turned back into kinetic, so we'll be moving back at 25 meters per second if we were looking at this spot. So this would be 25 meters per second. But at the top of the hill, 18.2. All right, here's a pendulum problem dealing with um, energy. And what we're going to look at is a pendulum that is pulled back to a height of 0.5 meters, and we want to find how fast at the bottom. Now at the bottom, we are going to call that zero height. So that means at the top it has potential, and it does not have kinetic because it's going to be stationary at the top of its flight. So in terms of peaky peaky, what we're going to do is cancel out the, the KE term in the initial. And then if we're looking at the very bottom, it's going to be at the ground, so the potential energy is zero. So MGH equals one half MV squared. Now mass is in every term, so it cancels. 9.8 meters per second squared. Height is 0.5 meters equals one-half V squared. And we simply multiply 9.8 times 0.5, divide it by 0.5 again, and take the square root. And we end up with 3.13 meters per second as our speed at the bottom. Now the second part of the problem asks about a height of 0.2 meters. Now if we look at, so 0.2 meters is our second problem here. How fast is it going? Now, if we look at peaky peaky, at the top it has potential and no kinetic, so the kinetic is still zero. So I'm going to start at point at the top point, but at the second spot we have both potential and kinetic. So the equation looks like this: mgh equals mgh plus one half mv squared. Still m in every term, so that cancels. So you do 9.8 times the height, which was 0.5, equals g, 9.8, height of 0.2, plus 1 half v squared. So 9.8 times 0.5 minus quantity of 9.8 times 0.2, close parentheses, divided by 0.5 and take the square root and we get a speed of 2.42 meters per second. So when we have the full speed, all the energy is converted to kinetic, it's 3.13. When it's only partially converted, it's 2.42. Now for the second one, we could have defined this zero point as the point two because that was the bottom of the second problem. In that case, we would have had a difference of 0.3 meters. The bottom would have been zero. And if you calculated it, PE would have been based on a height of 0.3. KE was um, going to be zero because it started at the top. PE would have been zero in that case, and we would have calculated the kinetic energy. But either way, if you define the new zero point, or you leave the zero point as your original spot from the first part, you should still get 2.42 meters per second at 0.2 meters above the ground.